It's April 11, 2024, Thursday afternoon, about 2.30, and I am currently in Southwest Harbor at the uh, Upper Town Dock, which is on the north side of the harbor, just off Clark Point Road. And I'm just going to step out of the car here in a second to show you what it looks like today. Before I do that, I'll tell you what's going on. It's raining. And it's dreary and kind of a little bit misty. So we've had a bit over half an inch of rain since last night. It's supposed to rain all night tonight. And then rain again tomorrow. So we're not looking at a particularly uh, nice couple of days. So why am I over here? Well, I just went over to uh, the Chandlery and picked up my bottom paint for sequester so that I can get the boat ready to go and I think I'm gonna stop over there in a little bit and uh, when I get there I'll talk a little bit about what the plans are for pre-launch work this year so let's step out into the rain and see what it looks like okay I'm out of the car and we're looking at the municipal upper town dock this is one of two town docks on this side the other one the lower town dock is out by the Coast Guard station and normally here they leave uh, floats in around those pilings there all winter but this year they took them out and they just got one float down there uh, for the winter I don't know when they're gonna reassemble the dock uh, they've only got a little over a month before a lot of boats are going to be in the water. Now we just walk out here. Sorry about the rain on the lands, but as I said, it is raining. And there we go. There's a few lobster boats hanging on moorings and floats that belong to lobstermen that have some traps and other things on them. But there it is, Southwest Harbor today. Pretty quiet here today. No weather coming in other than this rather unpleasant rain. So I'm gonna hop back in the truck and we're gonna go over and have a look at the boat and see how good the access is going to be to get some bottom paint on it. Well, I'm back in the car and we're just now driving across the west end of Southwest Harbor. As you can see, they're working on a road here. Uh, last summer they uh, were replacing water lines. I think they're rela replacing sort of trunks in their system right now. You can see some of them sitting over here, these concrete uh, containers there gradually burying those and uh, tying them in here's another one up here I'm not sure if those are for the water line or for the sewer system anyway it's uh, so that's what they appear to be doing now and hopefully they'll get it finished and get the uh, road repaved fairly soon because it's a real mess right now Especially on a rainy day like this where everything is softened up and there are lots of potholes in the places they have dug up like right here. This is just a mess. <laughs> As you can see. And uh, hopefully they'll get that smoothed out a little bit. So we're going to go out uh, on the south side of Southwest Harbor through the village of Manset, and that's where my boat is stored, at the boat yard out here. And we'll go in and have a look at the boat, and I'll spend a couple minutes talking about what my plans are for uh, pre-launch work this year. You see, it's not always beautiful and sunny here. We get days like this. <laughs> more than I'd like to talk about. In fact, last spring all the way through June was kind of like this. So, we'll just cruise over here. 
And you can see a 25 mile per hour sign. Last year, for some reason, they came in and they changed the speed limit in here. It used to always be 30 miles per hour or 35 miles per hour, changed every now and then. But last year, they put in several segments that are 25, linked by segments that are 35. And that doesn't really make a lot of sense uh, why they did that in terms of the number of houses along the road or anything. The uh, density is about the same in the 35 zones as it is in the 25 zones. And I think they might be working on the road out here. They were yesterday, and I guess we'll find out in a minute if they are today. Uh, I'm not sure what they're doing here. I think they were redoing water lines out here as well because they had dug trenches across the road in front of homes and they seem to be uh, putting in copper pipe which I think was water line. Doesn't look like they've got it closed off today. Yesterday it was closed from here for uh, about a quarter mile and you couldn't drive through. You had to go around on the shore road. Anyway, and the roads are, where well, they've done all this, they're really a mess right now. You can see these lines across the road where they trenched across the road to put in new, uh, I believe, water lines. here and after we finish at the boatyard I think I'll go on out to seawall and we will take a look at what they're doing out there if anything okay I'm in a boat shed now they're sequester and uh, access doesn't look too bad there's this inflatable here and I think there's another one on the other side uh, those will have to be moved before I can paint the bottom because otherwise I might get bottom paint on them. So what the plan is, is to repaint the bottom. I've got a bit of buildup of bottom paint right along the water line. So I'm thinking that what I'm going to do is scrape that off down maybe six or eight inches and, uh, and then build it back up couple coats. I think I've got enough bottom paint for that and get rid of the build up there. That's the only place I have a significant build up. And I might also repaint the bootstripe. It looks like it needs it a little bit. Let's take a look over on the other side. My next door neighbor, he was in here when I was here before waxing his boat. He's planning to go in pretty soon I think. Get around a couple things. Well, there she is on this side. Access is pretty good. Just have to pull this small inflatable out and I'll be able to work on the boat without any trouble. And they can do that without too much trouble because those are on trailers. And the other things I'm going to do is I will sand and varnish all of the on-deck teak, which is my handrails, cockpit combings, and the drop boards for the companionway. And that's it. So that's, uh, you know, about two hours to mask it, maybe half an hour to sand it, and then clean it up and put a coat of varnish on. Maybe two coats on the handrails. They could use a little more, I think. So that's pretty much what I'm going to do. I bought a zinc, and I just uh, set it back there on the prop shaft uh, on top of the old zinc. It will stay there. And uh, all I have left to do before I'm ready to start work is talk to the boatyard and get these uh, inflatables out of the way and then uh, buy a new roller pan and a new roller and roller cover and get some bottom paint on the boat. Bottom paint is not a huge job, although this boat has a lot of area, but it really only takes about three hours. Uh, about 30 minutes to mask it and then about two and a half hours to paint it. 
So the only other thing I'm going to do before we launch is, of course, I will carry some water up onto the boat. We don't have any running water in here. And, uh, and we'll test run the engine. That basically is just crank it over, make sure it starts, let it run for 30 seconds, and shut it down. And I may change the raw water impeller after I do that. I'll open it up and see what it looks like. It's been a couple years since I changed it. And that's about it, really. Uh, I will, of course, spend some time cleaning the interior, but I usually don't do much of that before we launch because it's pretty dark in the boat, and uh, I really <laughs> find it I can do a much better job when there's more light and I can see what I'm doing. I'm not going to go up there today because I just came in from outside, as you can see over there through that door. Uh, and because it's raining, it's very muddy out there, and I will definitely track mud onto the boat if I go up onto the boat. Plus, it's a little hard with these small boats here. The only place I can go on board is back at the stern, and I have to climb over the uh, push pit to get up, and it's a little bit of a challenge with the bionic knee. So this... I guess is officially the beginning of 2024 boat work season, which is really only going to be about two boat work days today, depending on how long it takes me to scrape the top few inches of bottom paint off the hull. That might actually be the most time consuming and difficult part of the whole job. Although I have a good carbide scraper, which should make short work of it. So that's uh, all I wanted to do today was just uh, kind of show you uh, what it looks like today. It's not the prettiest day. And then when we, uh, and then come over here and take a look at the boat. So we'll get to work on it pretty soon. I'll talk to the yard and see if they can move these inflatables and then I'll be able to get to work on the hull and get things going. I'm not going to start right away, even though it's April 11. The, uh, it's still getting down around freezing at night. I use a water-based uh, bottom paint, so uh, I don't want to put it on before I know the temperature is going to be above freezing for a day or two after I put it on so that it will dry properly. <laughs> and uh, at least I don't have to worry about rain. I've, Years ago, when the boat used to sit outside, I remember one day I painted half of the bottom, and although it hadn't been in the forecast, it started raining, and a good deal of the paint washed off the hull because it hadn't dried yet. And that was really an expensive mistake. I think it cost me about 100 bucks in paint and made a big mess. So, anyway. That won't happen in here because, of course, we're inside. But we do have to worry about temperature. And these metal sheds uh, stay quite cold uh, well into the spring. Even when it's getting up into the 60s outside, it's uh, seldom much over 50 degrees in the shed until you get well into summer. Okay, that wraps it up here in a boatyard. So let's head out to Seawall and see if we can see if they've done anything to the road. Alrighty, I'm out at the seawall road, and you can see the road is closed. Uh, you can see just past the sign for the road closure that uh, there has been a pathway cleared through the rocks that were across the road here, near the motel, which is right there and uh, this is still private property here uh, and we're not in the national park so i can film here and this i believe was cleared out by the town of southwest harbor because they needed to get some equipment onto this road to check the integrity of the water line that goes over to the national park campground which is in the woods over there on the other side and uh, apparently that water line has ruptured and so they needed to get some equipment in here 
to try and find where the rupture is so that they can then repair it. So they clean these rocks out. And there's a stake that's the boundary for Acadia National Park. So I'm not going to go past it. Although the road belongs to the state, you know, it's a little iffy as to exactly <laughs> if I'm in the park or not. But you can see there's still a good deal of rock on the road here from the last big storm in March. And there's still rock on the road up there. And you can see one of the spots where the edge of the road was torn up. So it doesn't look like they have done anything to repair the road yet. And the state is supposed to repair the road, and I do not know when they're going to do it. You see, there's not much visibility out there today. Ocean's not particularly rough, but uh, it's uh, kind of limited visibility due to the rain. Anyway, I'm going to head back home now that I have uh, come out here and seen what's up with the road here at Seawall. Uh, at the entrance to Acadia National Park by the Seawall Campground. Okay, so that's that. Uh, it's not very pleasant out here today, so I'm not gonna go anyplace else. I'm just gonna head home. Hope you enjoyed having a look at my boat, which should be in the water in just over a month. And uh, also, quick look at Southwest Harbor from the Upper Town Dock, and a look at the road here at Seawall, uh, out here by the Seawall Campground in Acadia National Park. Okay, thanks for watching.